Okay. Welcome, everyone. Making sure we're uh, active here. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, loan launch, the global launch of the uh, Global Tourism Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report of the World Economic Forum. This is a bi-yearly report, and we're very happy to uh, be able to do the launch today here in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Thank you, Minister Santos, for allowing us to do that here. Uh, this is an important report. Why? Uh, this is one of our flagship reports that talks about the competitiveness of countries when it comes to their travel and tourism industry. So we measure in this report all the policies and the factors that contribute to uh, the nation's ability to bring uh, travel and tourism to their country. Why is this important? It's important because travel and tourism contributes globally to about 10% of GDP and about a similar amount of jobs. So a very important sector. And uh, today we're talking about results of that report um, of 2017. We have uh, with us today uh, very eminent uh, speakers. First of all, Minister Santos, uh, Minister of Tourism of Argentina, welcome. Uh, next to him is Demetrios Marantis, the uh, senior vice president of Visa, uh, company headquartered in the USA. And then we have Minister Enrique de la Madrid Cordero, who is uh, the counterpart of Mr. Santos, Minister of Tourism, of the Secretary of Tourism uh, of Mexico. So welcome to all three of you. Um, when we look at this report, there's four things that uh, we find important to note in general before we talk about the specific findings of Mexico and Argentina and Latin America. The first is that we see that over time, countries get better in attracting travel and tourism. So they become more competitive. This is a, a, a general finding uh, of this year's report. The second finding uh, that we see is that in a world where we hear more talk about walls and borders, that we actually see in travel and tourism evidence of the opposite. We see more international arrivals, we see more tourists, and we also see more countries uh, making policies that make it easy for uh, tourists to arrive to a country. So instead of borders and walls, we see bridges. A third thing uh, that we also notice is that with the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, the technological revol revolution just sh reshaping entire industries, this also affects to a great extent the tourism industry. It's very important for countries to make sure they have connectivity for travelers, um, that they have information for travelers and, and for tourism. It's a very important factor. And then the final uh, consideration of the report is that and environmental um, attention or sustainability becomes increasingly important. As people travel more and go to more places, uh, it becomes increasingly important to uh, be attentive also to the sustainability of, uh, of tourism. Those are the general findings of this year's report. If we then look at the specific findings in terms of the ranking, the index that goes along with it, we see that at the very top of the table, Spain maintains its number one position. That is the number one most competitive uh, nation for tourism. The, the number two and three are also European countries, are uh, France and Germany. And then we see Japan making a big leap in the top ten. They go from um, they go they go to the fourth position. We see in general also that Asia uh, is a, a continent that uh, is in, is increasing a lot, is improving a lot. Um, and then we see a drop of the United States from fourth to sixth position, which is quite peculiar. And the same is true for Switzerland, which has typically been a very, very um, prominent country in terms of its competitiveness. It fell back from 6 to 10 position. If we then turn to Latin America, which is where we're at, then we see that the country of Minister um, uh, de la Madrid Cordero is uh, leading the ranking for Latin America on 22nd position, going up also. Uh, and the same is true uh, directionally for Argentina, which is now 6th in Latin America and for the first time 50th uh, globally, in the top 50 globally. Uh, so these are uh, the findings that we have of this uh, competitiveness report. And of course, uh, when we're here, we're also here to talk about those findings with uh, our guests. And so I'd like to turn, of course, first to our host uh, of today, Minister 
Santos. And uh, Mr. Santos, uh, we all got here safely. Uh, we're travelers to your country, and welcome for uh, welcoming us here. Uh, for me, it went quite smoothly. Uh, is that a coincidence? Could you tell us a little bit more about uh, how important travel and tourism is for Argentina uh, going forward? Thank you very much. For the Argentine Republic, tourism is a priority. So much so that um, President Macri has decided that this ministry becomes part of the economic cabinet, geared by the number of jobs created by tourism in Argentina, more than 1.1 million P jobs, direct jobs. Of course, the indirect jobs follow the lead, and they show Dina, a large uh, percentage of workers uh, is in the travel and tourism industry. More than one million, you said. Right. That's what I was telling you. That's why, hence the importance of this sector. And because it is so important, Argentina has also made key decisions, for example, deregulating its air traffic. Argentina is 15 years behind compared with the countries of the region that we're going to overcome very quickly as many things that we have done over this uh, first year of new government, both in uh, domestic flights and the connectivity at an international level. We are already seeing that in 2016, we increased 9.6 percent, and the public audience for new companies to be to come here, nine new players, five in the first stage, and two or three more in the last stage. We also decided to become a reserve of uh, nature of the world. Argentina has a national park system, which is one of the oldest of the planet, but we are working on 14 new national parks, preserving this for the tourism in an ecotourism vision, not only taking advantage of the natural situation, but thinking about nature with man included and with the development of, of the people. Oh, uh, because many of them who live next to these parks or inside the parks are the poorest uh, people in their own population or class. I have also decided to make strong uh, facilitation measures, uh, facilitation of visas and also uh, leading to airport taxes and harbor taxes, and a measure that we took uh, very soon to return back 21 percent of VAT to the foreign tourist. Taking advantage that the visa vice president is here, we have generated a synergic action with visa. Visa is telling them that when they pay anything in Argentina, 21% will be reimbursed. And I really thank him for this. And this relates to this new vision of Argentina. Finally, I wanted to talk to a very important decision. That is, we have decided to create a strategic plan with everyone. Nobody is left behind. All of the Argentine provinces, the full private sector, the PPP, the public private relationship, is absolutely of the essence and the sector of the workers. The first master plan that was introduced last year in March in Argentina was our tourism plan. We found everybody, all of the 24 provinces, the national, the executive, the um, trade unions, and the private sector in full as well, in all of its fields. I repeat, for us, Tourism has to be understood as a place for integration, as you very well said, and the integration with the others as a development space and as a construction of peace and opening in a country that becomes over and over more hostile. Argentina has decided to change that trend. The new brand is world friendly, open to the world. Noticed that, of course, eh? and I think for much, many of us, uh, it was a pleasant experience to come to Argentina, including the elements that you mentioned. That we can see uh, the taxes that have been reduced for or paid back even for uh, tourists. 
Um, a country that perhaps uh, is, uh, is, is exemplary for um, Latin America may be uh, that of your uh, neighbor uh, to your left uh, of the La Madrid Cordero, uh, Mexico. And so I wanted to ask uh, the Minister of Mexico, you're now on the 22nd uh, position uh, globally, and could you tell us a bit more about what were the next steps that you took uh, and how you got to that position? We've heard from uh, Minister Santos how he uh, improved his competitiveness. Could you comment on Mexico's? Yes, of course. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, we're, we're very happy also with the, with the achievement and with the trend, because uh, in the year 2009, we were precisely number 50. Uh, and now we're, gonna, we're number uh, 22. So that means that we have been uh, dealing with the competitivity issues, with productivity. As I have been saying, connectivity has been very relevant. We have been opening also our skies. We have been inviting more airlines to fly into Mexico. We just signed uh, last year, uh, President Peña Nieto, with the then President Obama, uh, we, we signed an agreement for a bilateral agreement to facilitate more, uh, more trips between uh, Mexico and the U.S. And we have been opening new routes, so that is very important. Second, we have been also dealing with the financial system. Uh, we, you need uh, money in order to finance new rooms and new, ho uh, new hotels, new marinas, new golf courses, new infrastructure, so the financial system is very relevant for this to happen. Uh, in promotion, I think we have also been more, uh, more uh, competitive, more, uh, more efficient, and now we have these new technologies which uh, reduce the cost of production and at the same time are more efficient uh, to where you, have, uh, you want to, to reach. And I have also been talking about collaboration. This is a sector where you have to deal with many other sectors in government, federal government, states, and the local authorities. So uh, we're very happy with that. And, and taking a look to the index, one of the issues that uh, I have two, two comments. We know that this is information that is based basically in 2015. But in one of the areas in which it seems that we are not doing that well, I think that we're doing very well, which is awareness sustainability. Uh, we recently uh, hosted COP13 in Cancun, and it was the first time, because the previous 12 COPs never had, as, as we did this time, we had the people from agriculture, from tourism, from fishery, uh, from forestry, because we all realize that if you want, we want to preserve the environment, we have to work together. So it, this was the first COP in which not only the ministers from the uh, environment were present, but we ourselves from tourism, from, uh, from agriculture, and the idea is to incorporate environmental policies into our own policies. So that's something important. And I just want to stress that in that event, uh, President Peña, he just informed about new national reserves. One was the Mexican Caribbean. The other is a uh, forest that we have in Tamaulipas. The other is, is the islands that we have in Baja California. By doing this, we already have 91 million hectares of uh, protected areas, which has permitted uh, to, for Mexico to already duplicate what was our goal and, and our commitment in the Aichi Agreement. Uh, we had committed to protect 10% of the seas, and we now have 22% of our seas protected, so we more than doubled. And in the case of land, our commitment was for 17% of the land to be protected area, and we already reached 13%. So I think that in the next index, uh, certainly Mexico will improve, because one of the areas where it seems that we hadn't done that well is sustainability, and I think we're very, working very hard. Excellent. Yeah, we're also looking forward to the next index, of course, in two years, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's still today and we're still 2017, but we're looking forward to that. One of the things that you mentioned, and also Minister Santos mentioned, uh, was the uh, provisions that you made uh, for the financial sector, or at least to uh, enable payments. Uh, we have an expert on that, of course, here, uh, Demetrios, uh, Senior Vice President at Visa in the United States. Um, we could ask you a lot of questions also about other things because of your country, but we're going to focus on uh, your expertise in terms of travel and tourism and perhaps focusing on Latin America as a whole. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what you see and how important um, your uh, contribution to that is? 
Sure, thank you, Peter. And first of all, Minister Santos, thank you so much for hosting WEF here in, in Buenos Aires. I can't think of a better place for WEF to release its travel and tourism report. Um, you'll be happy to know that in December, by coincidence, I was down here as a tourist, spending my you know tourist money in, in <laughs> Buenos Aires and in Puerto Iguazu. So Argentina has, has so much to, to share. And, it, and uh, so thank you very much for hosting us. And thank you, Peter and Tiffany, for producing such an amazing report. It's extremely insightful, and, and we will rely on it in, in our analytics. Um, you all know who, what Visa is. You know, we're a leading global payments company. We have three billion plus issued cards around the world. And obviously, tourism is something that's very near and dear to our hearts. And we contribute um, to tourism in a whole variety of ways. So for example, first, um, as you know, electronic payments um, provides a tourist a very safe, efficient, convenient, and secure way to pay for tourist services, whether that's at home before he or she embarks on a trip, during the trip in an in a international destination, or when that person comes back. Gone are the days where um, tourists have to be very unfashionable and have those belts around their waist with wads of cash in it, um, because now there really is a very safe and secure alternative to that in the form of electronic payments. Um, the second way that we try to contribute to tourism, and Minister Santos mentioned it, is we try to connect tourist supply with cardholder demand. And so, for example, when a country like Argentina does something amazing for tourists, which is provide a VAT rebate um, for the 21 percent VAT on lodging, we want to make sure that our cardholders know that. So we've embarked on a, a global marketing campaign um, together with, with uh, the minister and his team um, to focus on the eight corridors of tourism from Argentina, the US, Brazil, Chile, um, Uruguay, uh, Brazil, et cetera. And you know, spread the news um, about what Argentina is doing. If you walk up and down the streets here in Puerto Madero, you'll see advertisements um, for Visa that show what the government of Argentina is doing. Likewise, in Mexico, you know, we have social media campaigns where if it's snowing in Washington, D.C., for example, we will target cardholders and show them a picture of a beach in Tulum um, to give them kind of an idea that maybe they want to go be a tourist, tourist there. Um, so again, so we try to connect um, tourist supply with cardholder demand. The third thing that we try to do is we have an enormous amount of insights and analytics just based on aggregate cardholder data. Um, and so we know that, for example, here in Argentina, um, you know, the largest spend comes from cardholders in the United States, who constitute 28% of cardholder spend here in Argentina. Interestingly, 53% of that spend is in Buenos Aires. The next largest city of cardholder spend is Bariloche, but with only 4%. So those are the kinds of insights that could be useful to a government as it tries to think about, oh, do we need to develop increased acceptance infrastructure in Bariloche or elsewhere in the country to help um, you know, uh, drive tourism spend um, in that way. So, and there are also lots of other interesting insights that, that you know that we have. Um, you know, something I shared on the panel this morning. Interestingly, the the cities in the region that are growing the most from a year-to-year -year, um, hotel stay are in Argentina, uh, Colombia, and Brazil. Um, I think Bariloche had 34% year-on-year growth, which is which is interesting. Um, so analytics are obviously very important. The last thing that I'll point to is um, we work very hard to try to uh, improve the payments infrastructure around the world because if you're in a city um, that has high acceptance of cards, the likelihood that you're going to drive tourism spend is much higher. In fact, the data shows that. The higher the acceptance um, infrastructure is in a particular location, the more tourism spend there is. So for example, we're working with Mexico right now on um, trying to help improve the acceptance infrastructure for merchants in, in Mexico's Pueblos Magicos, like 
tequila, for example. Um, and that, you know, the, the idea of that is we'll work to help improve the infrastructure, and then that will increase um, the merchants that accept cards, and that will drive tourists to spend money there. So there's a lot that is happening um, in the payments space um, with respect to tourism, and it's been a real pleasure for us to be able to contribute, whether it's in Argentina, Mexico, or elsewhere. Yeah, yeah and thank you, Demetrius, for, uh, for being here and giving those insights. I think it's uh, indeed very interesting. Uh, well, of course, what you say is that we can learn a lot from data. We can learn a lot from the uh, ICT insights, so to speak, uh, that come from, for example, uh, your company. Um, and so I want to bring that back uh, to Mr. Santos, uh, what we've seen in Argentina is also, in terms of the ranking, uh, that you've made some improvement uh, in terms of education and in terms of ICT. Uh, we hear from Demetrios that understanding uh, the data behind tourism is also very important. Uh, and so, because that will help you to increase your competitiveness going forward and to uh, provide a better uh, environment for tourists. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about um, how you talked about how economy, you're integrated in the Minister of, Ministry of uh, Economy. Could you tell us a bit more about how you're working together also on education and ICT, which seem to be two indicators in which you're improving? Uh, bueno. Let me clarify something. We are not part of the Ministry of the Economy, but together with the Ministry of Finance, Production and Transport, we are part of an economic area of the government. That's been the criterion chosen by President Macri to lead uh, the economy. Our relation with education and innovation is basic. One of our first measures was to create an area of innovation that did not exist in the Ministry of Tourism. Today we have an undersecretariat specialized in innovation which is the one that's moving into this direction, this dimension which is essential because the trend is to increasingly solve trade transactions on the internet. That's why it's so important to have digital, proactive digital policies, and that's why it's so important to have a relation with the means of payment, because that's a link that allows us to do the business in the virtual space. In that sense, we are developing techniques on a permanent basis aimed at uh, developing innovation. Because, as I said, this is useful not only for the transaction as such, but it's an ex post database. It's data that can be used ex post that allows us to make almost real time adjustments. This was not possible uh, with the traditional means or traditional marketing. Today, being able to receive this information that our friend was referring to and information from social media as well, all that allows us to know customers' behavior, how they act, what they are comparing us against, what they consume, when they consume, this big data information available, which is essential today for any tourism public policy. And our relation with education is basic because it is essential because in Argentina, we understand tourism to be a rooting factor. We want to prevent what's happened for a long time, that is our youth leaving their places of birth to move to big cities. And what they do is lose cultural values and they end up with degraded lives. And on the contrary, in a very small village in the north of Argentina, in the province of Jujuy, for example, in the village of Purmamarca, with those colorful hills which are so beautiful, you'll find those magical towns and villages, very poor people selling their produce, but you don't see any misery or violence there. And uh, there's almost full employment in those small villages. That's why we work so much with education. And what we do is adapt our communication to contexts. A country like ours is five, six, seven countries at the same time with different climates, different cultures. And we adapt our curricula to the contexts of all those countries that we have within our country. And, and, and it's nice to hear from you also how you use education and uh, innovation. Uh, you said uh, big data 
uh, to improve your uh, tourism competitiveness. Ultimately, that will have an impact, hopefully, and it will. We know this from the data on uh, on the arrivals on tourism and and ultimately on on, on GDP growth and on, on work on, on 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 jobs. And I wanted to ask also to your colleague um, uh, of Mexico. Uh, who, of course, uh, there's a lot of, we know Mexico also from having a lot of manufacturing jobs. This is a story that we've heard a lot. Um, now we see that uh, or all around the world, manufacturing jobs are under pressure. Uh, and so uh, is tourism then uh, a, a space where we can create extra jobs if we have the right education in place, if we have the right uh, IT and innovation in place? Could you comment a little bit about the role uh, of that? Yes, of course. Well, first, uh, I think that we are living in a world where many, many sectors of the economy increase in terms of value, but not in terms of employment. And, and that, is, that is due in, in part because a way to reduce cost is to go through automatization, through more technology, and in a way, job elimination. And, and that, that is one of the threats that we're facing now around the world. And I think that tourism has exactly the opposite characteristics. There is no way that you cannot hire more people if you're having more hotels, more rooms, again, more marinas. It, it comes directly. It, there's, there's little space for automatization. There's a lot of space for innovation. There's a lot of space for technology. But fortunately, it is not so much, it's not so clear for automatization. So yes, in Mexico, we estimate there are around 9 million people, 9 million Mexicans, work uh, around the tourism sector. So it is one of the sectors that, that, that uh, has more employment. Uh, according to our statistics, last year, uh, the, the, the value of the GDP of tourism grew at twice the rate of the average of the economy. And also the, the, the increase of employment also is growing at one and a half times the rest of the economy. So it is very intensive in labor. Uh, and that is something that is very positive in a population of 123 million Mexicans. Now, the, we, we always say that we want to have new, more jobs, but better paid jobs. And this is where I think competitivity plays a huge role in productivity. Mexicans work a lot. We work more than, for example, people from the US in terms of the average hour. But if you see the value of how much we uh, earn or produce per hour, it is significantly lower. So that is why we're really working on productivity, because at the end of the day, we want well-paid jobs. And, and in Mexico, we have, uh, in the Ministry of Tourism, we're working on 44 agendas, a competitivity agendas in 44 destinations. And the idea is basically to do what I think you put in your index, to pay attention and what are the issues that we should be solving uh, to improve uh, competitivity and productivity. And that is uh, just uh, to raise the issue that I think that this index is very useful because if we want to continue to improve in the index, then we have to tackle those issues in which there are areas of opportunity. So I think it's a very, a very positive and useful instrument for us countries to pay attention in the areas of opportunity. And to perhaps keep on growing. Uh, I want to give now uh, the chance, if there's any questions from the audience, we've got a few minutes left before we're going to close the press conference. Uh, so I don't know if uh, anyone uh, wants to contribute. I should also note, by the way, um, uh, Demetrios, uh, uh, just for the, the record, uh, the, the report was authored. The main authors were Tiffany uh, Misrahi and Roberto Crotti, both here in the audience with us. I'm merely doing the moderation of this, uh, of this press conference. So <laughs> That's it. Um, has, has many fathers. Many yes, fathers. yes. <laughs> um, and, um, and there's a lot of success uh, stories from this uh, competitiveness report. Um, I'd like to uh, encourage everyone that's here to read uh, the uh, full report, which you can find for those who are here. We still have print copies. That's not very sustainable of us. Uh, and those that are following us online, you can also find the report on the World Economic Forum website, weforum.org. Um, is the travel and tourism competitiveness uh, ranking of 2017. Um, with that, I would like to thank all of the panelists um, here. And, and thank you again, Minister Santos, for welcoming us here in Argentina. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for uh, all of you watching at home. Thank you. Thank you.